Hey guys, this is Shadow Knight Paladin, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing another traditional piece. We are using watercolors, and I'm doing the leftover watercolor challenge again. If you're not familiar with it, I won't be surprised. It's something I made up a few weeks back, and it came about because I wanted to clean my palette that you see on screen, but I also didn't want to waste the paints that were caked onto it. So I imposed upon myself a challenge to paint or color something in just using the colors in the palette. And I am not allowed to add in any fresh new paint mm -hmm. onto it since the green goal after all was to clean the palette. Of course, that was the only hard rule I imposed upon myself. I still used my normal techniques, my normal materials, brushes, whatever. I even mix some of the paint together whenever it's needed, but the only hard fast rule was no new paints. So the first challenge turned out pretty, very, very good. It was super pretty. Uh, I wasn't really expecting it to turn out that way since the paint on this is accumulated from months and months of drawing and painting, so it would be logical that the color palettes won't match. But surprisingly, they did. So this time, I'm doing it again with a more limited palette since I used up a lot of the paint during the first drawing. So now, we are using red, somewhat pink since we have a white over there, a yellow, yellow ochre, this sort of green and white mixture I did a long long time ago, and a flesh tone. So that being said, we are using a lot of red because that's the most paint I have on the palette. And it is pretty fun to do. Uh, it really challenged me in terms of colors and trying to think how to position them, how to mix them together and not make them clash, especially the green and the red. And it really made me look at my paints and try to ration it out and see what parts it can only fit into. And I think I did a pretty good job of that since... I didn't really have areas that looked too weird because the color suddenly changed because I ran out of paint or anything. But yeah, it was super fun. So for this particular painting this time, I'm doing it not particularly lineless, but I'm starting off with the paints first and building the shapes using the paint instead of my usual line art and then color. Uh, I tend to switch between the two styles or techniques whenever I feel like it. Uh, if I feel like the piece calls for it, like the Drop Pop Candy Kaito and the Drop Pop Candy Mako paints, paintings that I did months and months back, I chose for a very subtle line art for that because I felt like it needed that sort of subtlety. Uh, unfortunately for this piece, even though I did start off with that intention, I did switch over and added a lot more lines to the, like, added a lot more liner to the end because there wasn't enough definition. And that was another challenge I encountered with this particular challenge, or challenge, uh, since I can't add fresh paint and the amount of paint that I have is limited and I can't really mix the proper colors that I want to mix. Uh, it's hard to define the shadows, and I had to rely on just layering the same color on top of each other that was a lot more thicker and darker than the rest of the piece, but that still didn't provide a lot of definition to some areas. So here I am trying very hard 
to make sure that there is some difference in my colors and that I'm able to use the white there that creates the pink. But since the red is pretty strong, it's still... Well, it wasn't as light as I hoped it to be. But it did give me a lot of paint to create the background with. I was worried about that, to be honest, that I'd be left with a plain white background. But since I had a lot of white, I was able to create a more pinkish looking background than, you know, nothing. And I was also hoping to incorporate the green a bit more, but given the color scheme or how I wanted the piece to feel, it didn't really fit. Like, I wanted to go, as you can see, I wanted to go with a more badass dude than anything, and I felt like the green didn't really fit into it if I added it in to make it look soft and sweet, so I opted to use it for the orb in his hand instead. So here I'm trying to use the red to create the finition for shadows again, and it did work to some extent, but I would have wanted a lot more definition than that. But I really like how the cloth turned out, and the folds. I'm pretty happy about that. Another tricky thing was that I didn't know what color to use for his pants. Originally, I was gonna leave it at the white and just create like pinkish shadows, but since I used the pink for the background, it would have blended his pants into the background. So, trying to keep color theory in mind and not screwing up the theme or the color, the color feel of the piece, I went with yellow ochre instead. Defined that ass. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I defined it with a bit of darker yellow ochre and like I had a little bit of bird shenna left on the palette so I used that. And I wasn't really content with the amount of or rather the lack of definition in the piece. So I grabbed a sepia um sepia ink brush pen by Tokyo Finds and used that to line in some parts to where where there would be shadows. His hair took me a long time because it was spiky and I wanted to keep it spiky. But this is a pretty short video. Uh, it didn't reach my 10 minute mark that I usually surpass because my live streams or my paintings usually take a bit of time. And since this was pretty small, it's on a small notebook. Well, it's on a medium sized notebook and it wasn't overly complicated. I didn't really have a lot of footage to you know, cut out and speed up and stuff, so we're here at uh, an almost 9 minute video, so yeah. But I'm still happy how it, with how it turned out, especially the lines. I was worried about that for a while, that it would make it too charming instead, but it really did turn out, especially with this color palette. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe or like if you want to see more of this. Follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, and DeviantArt, and I'll see you around.